Hi everyone. This is me. Um, I'm Katie Sullivan. I'm the teacher for the class and I've been having an amazing crazy day um, and I'm trying to use this Google live event thing to uh, record my lecture because if I can figure it out then I can uh, um, use it and people can join in if they want. But I have no idea if it's working and uh, I've been uh, downgraded or upgraded from uh, bronchitis to pneumonia. So I have limited time and I've been up and down all day uh, working on my lecture because when I started the class, when I've been thinking about it um, before we started, I was, you know, had these great plans for what I was going to do and now I'm having to do them while sick. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do lecture one and hope that it's recording and that you can see this screen and maybe you can even see me and my messy hair and pajamas. So um, a little bit about navigation. So you can um, get into uh, the, you know, everything you need for the class through uh, Blackboard. However, if you're out in the world and want a relatively easy way to access course materials, I maintain a website um, at katiesullivan.com, which is my name. And if you go to katiesullivan.com, you'll be taken to a site like this. And there's not a lot to it, but there is a link for teaching. And under the teaching link, there's um, information on how to contact me if you need to contact me. And there's also a link to my school calendar. So I teach at uh, primarily at Jay Sarge, but I don't teach there during the summer. I teach at Sean Tyler during the summer, but I also teach at South University. And I keep this calendar um, for myself, um, and the students are also welcome to use it, which is kind of organizes my class materials for me. So I know what's going on, and um, it's a way for you to get to things without having to log in to Blackboard. Um, so today is Tuesday, June 7th, and our class is doing Lecture 1. So if you've been into Blackboard, hopefully you've done the introductions. And I've been um, posting the introductions in a Google Doc as I get them. Um, the uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of uh, discussion boards because I feel like everything just gets embedded and lost in the discussion board. So uh, we're going to be using Google Docs um, throughout the class. Those are my dogs. I have dogs. Four dogs. <laughs> Normally uh, during the day, it's a lot quieter. So I don't. Who knows what's going to happen? So. As you've been sending in your email, I've created a, a Google Doc that includes your pictures and so you can read a little bit about yourselves. Um, and I'm, I'm posting these based on emails that you're sending, so nobody's having to type anything in here. But I do want you to learn how to use Google Docs to present information to me and to the class. So I have a test document for you to use. You don't have to have anything to use Google Docs. You can use it with a Mac. You can use it with a PC. You don't have to have an account, although you all do have accounts, um, Google accounts through VCCS, the Virginia Community College System. Um, so, but you don't have to have one. And so sometimes when I ask a question, I'll ask people to answer it, and there'll be a, something that looks like this. And you just come in and you pick a box. So your box will be where your answer will go. That's right. uh, guys, seriously. Jack. And the uh, you'll type your name and then hit enter and then you'll just type in your answer in your box. And if you make a mistake in Google Documents, as is true if you make a mistake in a lot of things in uh, Windows. If you hold down the control key and hit Z, it just backs over what you did. It's the um, Mac key and Z if you're using a Mac or whatever you call that key with the um, 
the thing on it. I keep wanting to say Windows, but that's not it. Anyway, so you can practice in here. There's something you can mess up. Um, this is where you can get a feel for what it's like to use the Google Documents. So if you want to practice, uh, feel free. And when you're done, you just go up and close it, and you'll be taken back to the lecture notes. So these are lecture notes for lecture one. And uh, the lecture notes are posted in Google Docs and they have links in them. Um, and I use the lecture notes as I do the lecture. And uh, you'll hopefully be seeing the notes, I hope, um, while you're hearing me talk. And uh, the exams that you'll take, the three exams, will come from these lectures. Uh, the material in the book is helpful for you to read and will um, uh, back up and reinforce what I talk about in class. But the um, exams are focused on the material from the lecture. So let's get started. So what is sociology? So a lot of people take sociology without knowing what it is, right? And if you read a lot of the answers so far when people have been uh, doing their introduction as to what sociology is, a lot of people don't know. They know it has something to do with society, um, but they're not sure what it is. And so sociology is kind of at the other end of the continuum from psychology. Both sociology and psychology try to explain and understand human behavior. And all of us are, um, you know, kind of junior psychologists, and we all use psychological explanations to explain people's behavior. And part of the model that we tend to use when we explain people's behavior is that individuals are rational and that they make rational choices based on um, internal characteristics like their character, um, resources like willpower and self-discipline, and things like drive. And these qualities are, again, they're part of who you are. They are things that can be taught, right? You get them from your parents, but even if your parents don't teach them, you can still get them, right? So this is when we look to a person who's um, raised in foster care and has a difficult life, but ends up at MIT, right? So we believe there is some external um, characteristic that, I mean, internal characteristic that can lead people um, up and out of difficult situations. These are psychological, this is a psychological perspective. We, um, in, in this psychological perspective, we tend to see the world as basically fair. And there's actually something called the just world hypothesis, which believes that we all kind of are where we are in society based on what we've done. So if you look, for example, at why are people poor? Well, people are poor because they're not working hard enough or um, you know, they haven't taken the time to get an education or the um, explanations for poverty um, are internal, right? They're characteristics of the individuals. So, what happens with this is when we look at things like affirmative action, um, which gives a weight to things like poverty and race, people tend to get really upset um, because we want um, admission to a school like Harvard to be based on merit only, right? So this we call a meritocracy. And a meritocracy is that it's based solely on how hard you work. And sociology kind of comes along, it's like, well, you know, really, admission to Harvard is not really a meritocracy. And people who are wealthy have their own affirmative action. So if you think of getting into Harvard as being awarded a series of points, and the person who earns the most points are the ones who get in. Right? So you get points for your SAT scores and grades and um, you know things you've done, extracurricular activities, 
And in a situation of affirmative action, you may get points for uh, low socioeconomic status or for being from a minor minority group. But what a lot of people don't know is that there's also um, you know, points and weight given in terms of legacy. And legacy means who in your family has gone to Harvard. So if your father went to Harvard, you're more likely to get into Harvard. Right. So this is you being given um, additional weight and a additional likelihood to get in based on something that you didn't do. Right. It's just pure luck um, being born into a privileged family. And so this is where sociology kind of starts to come in and say, you know, all this stuff about hard work and getting ahead and you know, maybe isn't quite all there is to the picture. And again, when we look at something like poverty, we have this expectation that people who are born into extreme poverty will somehow find a way to pull themselves up and work hard and get out of poverty. But at the same time, most of us are in the same social class as our parents, right? Most of us are not, you know, we have not worked, you know, in a driven state, staying up all night, going to the library, working two jobs and, you know, doing all these things to raise ourselves up. Um, but we have this expectation of people who are poor, who have um, fewer resources than we do, that that's what their pathway out of poverty is. So sociology starts to get a little cranky um, at these explanations because sociology looks at instead of what's going on inside of the individual it looks at the context of behavior so we look at human behavior and we look at human society and we look at how society influences human behavior so there's something, for example, called the fundamental attribution error. And it's a thinking error, and there's one that goes along with it. And the fundamental attribution error goes like this. So if someone, let's say someone at your job is late, okay, when someone does something that we disapprove of or think that we think is um, not um, morally good, we tend to explain that person's behavior by looking at internal fixed characteristics, right? Again, this idea that people have this like um, character that they carry with them into every circumstance. So someone comes into class late and, you know, people roll their eyes um, and it's, you know, they're irresponsible or they're lazy. Um, and, you know, we tend to explain people's behavior, again, by internal uh, states, which is the fundamental attribution error. We attribute people's behavior to this internal fixed state. The flip side of the fundamental attribution error is that when we explain our own bad behavior, we tend to look at the context, right? And we don't look at this idea of an internal fixed state in part because we don't like to be critical of ourselves, but also in part because um, we recognize that the situation plays a role. Right? So um, if you're late to work then or school, then it was because your babysitter didn't show up on, in time for you to leave on time. It's not because you're lazy and irresponsible and you're not rolling your eyes at yourself, right? If you cut someone off in traffic, it's because someone else was pushing into your lane and you had no choice but to get out of the way or be hit, right? So again, this idea that our behavior is in context, which is a sociological way to look at the world. And other people's behavior is based on internal characteristics, which is a psychological way to look at behavior. And we're focused on the sociological way. There's kind of a parallel 
in looking at the difference between people who are liberal and people who are conservative, or not so much the people, but the ideologies of liberal and conservative. So um, people who are conservative tend to be more along the lines of the psychological explanation. And there tends to be more belief in the just world hypothesis. And if people aren't, um, you know, making it, then they look to the people themselves, right? If you look at poverty, for example, or racism, right? That it's like, you know, yes, there's racism and yes, it's a problem, but it's not that big a problem. And, you know, we need to kind of move on um, and, you know, that the idea that uh, government should be small, that uh, individuals' lives should be private, and that we are working here for ourselves, right, not for other people. And that, you know, the, the you know, where you end up in life is based on how hard you work. So the liberal perspective tends to look at systems. So a liberal perspective, you know, for example, if you focus on the minimum wage, from a conservative perspective, people who own small businesses can't afford to pay high wages to employees and if you force a high minimum wage, then people are just going to seek automated ways to get work done, right? So, you know, Wendy's is going to bring in computers to uh, um, take orders because they're not going to pay somebody $15 an hour. From a uh, liberal perspective, um, someone who is working a full-time job should be able to put a roof over their head no matter how modest it might be. And that if a company can't make a profit while paying a living wage, then its economic model is not viable. So conservatives are unhappy with like food stamps and welfare because they say it uh, stops people, it, it disincentivizes people from working. And from a liberal perspective, you can look at uh, Walmart, for example, and Walmart uh, pays uh, so little to its employees that many of its employees are eligible for food stamps. And those employees take those food stamps and spend them at Walmart to the tune of $2 billion a year. So from that perspective, it's Walmart that's getting uh, welfare, right? They're getting $2 billion a year. Or if you look at the tobacco industry, that they are creating a product that basically does nothing but make people sick and kill them. And so from a conservative point of view, you know, people choice if they want to smoke or not and it creates jobs and industry and from a liberal point of view you have you know the government pays the medical bills that we pay the medical bills and society pays the medical bills that and all the missed time and work and all the other costs the social security when parents die and all the other things for the tobacco companies and so we're basically paying their profit so we're allowing them to make people sick and then we're paying to treat the sickness and that's um, profit so we're giving them profit okay so sociology does not um, disagree that there are people who are lazy right and they're they're bad people and people can get very frustrated with sociology because it's really at the other end of the continuum when looking at poverty, right? It's not interested in the, you know, woman at Walmart with her uh, buying a steak with her um, food stamps, right? We're, 
it's we just that's just not in our realm of interest it's not that you know sociologists as human beings don't believe that there are people who are idiots and people who just you know are leeches on society we do but as scientists as social scientists that's not what we study right we study the circumstances so if you find yourself getting frustrated if you come into sociology and you are uh, politically conservative sociology is probably going to drive you nuts and and that's okay you're welcome whatever your political background um, but I ask that you know if you if you give it a minute um, when you learn or hear something and that you kind of accept going in that you know where we are in the world is not just about what's inside of us good or bad right I mean that there's no way around that right there's there's no way around the fact that um, you know the family that we're born into for example plays a role in where we end up as adults and that in general if you're going to be pulled over by the police it's better to be rich than to be poor right and so it's just I ask you to kind of accept that society has an influence okay. and also sociology is not a cult so you don't have to believe you know what I say or what I talk about but it is a way of looking at the world and you do have to learn it um, in order to be successful in the class and remember that it's a sign of intelligence to be able to consider a viewpoint without accepting it right and again so kind of my last before um, we go on is that you can have your own opinions about the things that we talk about in class but you can't have your own facts right so there's certain facts that we'll be talking about um, and certainly you can have opinions but you don't get your own facts right um, so all right and then I, I don't know what I was thinking here so I'm just gonna forget that. okay so writing exercise number one so the first thing I'd like you to think about um, for your writing exercise is that we all um, you know have this idea that anybody can end up um, in the Ivy League right? so work hard get ahead end up in the Ivy League so why aren't we all at Harvard right so and it's this is not a question you know about oh are you lazy or whatever but it's, it's a question to think about in terms of society and how society influences our lives right and our, our how our position in society influences our lives so to consider you know why why didn't you you know why aren't you 18 at Harvard right? and someone asked me uh, you know why if they were talking about Stanford University which is you know a really good school which we're going to be talking about in just a few minutes and Stanford University you know the first thing he said was well the tuition and I said well Stanford University if your parents make under hundred and twenty five thousand dollars a year is free and if your parents make under sixty thousand dollars a year tuition is free and room and board is free and there are similar programs at Harvard and at University of Virginia and other schools these schools want economic diversity and they do not have it um, so you know one of the first things he was oh, it's so expensive but um, the question then uh, is you know when I tell people that is why don't people know that right what is it that what's the reason why people don't know that so I'd like you to consider um, why you didn't go to Harvard at 18 um, or if you're 18 now why aren't you at Harvard um, and not just oh I did other things but did you apply to colleges or um, kind of you know when you were in high school were you thinking 
of Harvard or um, getting into another Ivy League school or kind of trying to understand um, who goes to Harvard. Okay, so there's no right or wrong answer, just take a stab at it. Um, there's a link here to a Google Doc, and so you just type in your name and um, control Z if you make a mistake. And so the question is, why didn't I go to Harvard at 18? Or Stanford or some other um, Ivy League college. Okay. All right. So I'm going to take a break there. Let me see if I can pause this.